and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am excited to be coloring up the house mouse knit one uh, image and this is really cool. It's actually a red rubber cling stamp which you don't see a ton of anymore but I love that uh, they're still making them so it's really really fabulous especially for the house mouse collection because one of the things I really appreciate about House Mouse is that the all the detail of the fur and kind of that fuzzy um, detail of the yarn, all of that is built into the stamp uh, image. And so when you're coloring it up, I'm not like the best colorist, so I don't really, I haven't really mastered that whole flicking technique to get the texture of fur or get the texture of different fabrics and yarns and whatnot. But you don't really have to worry about any of that with um, these uh, red rubber cling stamps because red rubber tends to be able to get you a lot more fine detail than a photopolymer stamp, clear stamp would generally be able to do for you. So that's why um, these illustrations are really fun to color up because I can basically just color them in the same way that I approach any of my other coloring, which is to just try to get some shadows and some highlights so that there's a little bit of contrast, there's a little bit of contouring so that it the image doesn't look quite as flat and today I am coloring with my color pencils these are Prismacolors and they are they are my favorite uh, if I had to pick though I did pick up recently a couple of other um, well-reviewed but more affordable brands of color pencils and those are those work pretty well um, also though I still have to give the slight edge to Prismacolors there's just nothing quite as soft and creamy the only downside I feel to the Prismacolors and it seems like it just depends on the color, but I do experience some of that breakage. And I have um, heard a lot of people say that that's a little bit of a shame because the um, earlier, I don't know how many years ago, but there used, this wasn't always a problem. Like it, it didn't have that breakage problem, but the, something has changed along the, um, along the way. And now, um, that's happening more for people where it didn't always before. And it's only a couple different colors. So I wouldn't say that it's a, uh, you know, prevalent problem across all of the pencils. It's just a couple, a couple here and there. But I haven't quite, but you know, that, I guess that's what you get if you, if you want a very soft and creamy <laughs> um, medium to, to color with. But uh, I like to approach my coloring in kind of stages and I'm not even coloring, I'm actually just coloring straight onto a card base. This is actually a pre-made card base from a kit. It's a four by six card. But it's not like a super smooth card, so that is one thing that sort of makes it a little bit easier to do color pencil work with because with color pencils, with that wax medium, you do need a, a substrate that's got a little bit of tooth to it so that it can really grab onto that wax. And so coloring onto maybe the same paper that you might color alcohol markers onto would would be a little bit more challenging because usually alcohol marker coloring you would probably look for something that's like super smooth but that's going to be a little bit harder on um, coloring with color pencils because it's there's nothing to, the, like the paper won't grab that wax in the same way and it'll be harder to actually build up layers and one of the reasons that I am slow at coloring is because I feel like with especially color pencils I have to color the whole image it probably ends up being two three sometimes four times just to get the depth of color that I'm looking for and with this I for the yarn area um, I even did 
a little bit of an undercoating with some pan pastels just to block out the color and give me a little bit of a jump start. The pastels are great because they very, very quickly and um, without a lot of medium just gives you a nice base to color on top of. And it just, it depends on whether you want to cover a hundred percent of your paper when you're done or if you're okay with some of the uh the base paper whatever you're coloring onto um if you're okay with some of that still showing through because the very last layer i do is um to burnish and try to really smooth everything out really um put some pressure when I'm coloring, because uh, as I'm adding layers, it, it is a little bit uh, easier if you go with just a very light touch uh, as you're coloring and just gradually build up those layers. If you burnish aggressively, that is like if you press down really hard uh, towards the beginning, you're gonna flatten your paper. And again, you're gonna be smoothing it totally out. And so you're not gonna be able to build up more layers of color on top of that, at least not as easily. So I leave the burnishing to the very end when I feel like I think I'm done. And this helps to really spread out and, and cover all of the white of the cardstock. So that's about that's about all I know really about coloring, especially with color pencils. I otherwise I'm just trying to go for slightly darker in the shadow areas and lighter in the um, areas where I think there's highlights. I've long ago stopped caring too much about trying to get photorealistic coloring, and ever since sort of making that mental switch, I feel like I enjoy coloring a lot more because it's just a lot less pressure, and especially with an image like this, it's really fun to just kind of sit back and, and really enjoy the process. So I wanted to also mention that my video today is part of a collaboration hop. I organize a couple of these um, each month to feature new releases by Spellbinders. It's totally very casual among me and some of my crafty friends who are also Spellbinders influencers. We like to get together and release all of our videos um, featuring whether it's the club kits or something new from the uh, latest collection and by doing or presenting our videos as part of a hop it's a way for our fans to maybe meet some other designers along the hop it's a way for you to also kind of get a lot of inspiration if you want to check out what's coming out this month and see um, different ways of using it we don't all get the same things and so you might see some of us craft with the same things you might see us craft with different things so it's a fun way to just get some uh circulation among our viewers as well. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks so much for popping by. And if you are a uh, regular viewer of mine, I do encourage you to hop along and maybe discover a new designer pop, uh, possibly who you haven't met yet on YouTube. And if you want to see all of the videos that are on this hop, you can just click on that hashtag that was on the screen a moment ago, hashtag Spellbinders DEC 23 collab. That should bring up all of the videos on this hop. And for some reason, if it doesn't, you can always expand the description box below and get direct links to each person's video. As well in the description box, you'll find uh, what I crafted with today. It's called, the stamp set is called Knit One and it's part of the House Mouse Winter collection that just released. Thanks for popping by and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.